All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about the Our World in Data interview story. As I mentioned in class, this assignment is an interview that you're going to conduct either in person, on the phone, or on Zoom, anywhere where you can get an audio recording that you will then convert into a transcription. And your interview will be with a subject matter expert on a topic that relates to a visualization from the Our World in Data website. You can read more about the requirements here on Canvas if you look at the Our World in Data interview story assignment page. Before I jump into actually showing you the Our World in Data website, I do want to point out that there are some requirements for submitting this story at the end of the month that you can start thinking about now. One of those requirements is that you're going to need to create a Medium account so Medium, if you go to medium.com, is a publishing platform where anyone can blog. And we have our own class publication called FIU News Visualization, right? You're going to be adding your articles to this class publication for the world to see. But in order to do that, you need to make your own Medium account and send me your username so that I can add you as an author to the class publication. All of those requirements are covered in this standard requirements section on Canvas. If you go to this page, you'll see that you need to have added your work to the class medium publication and you need a photo and all of those things. So definitely check this out sooner rather than later so that you're prepared for those requirements and they don't sneak up on you. I'm going to be posting more tutorials about recording your own audio and about transcribing your audio with otter.ai later on. But for now, if you look at this, it should give you a good introduction to what you're going to be doing. So what I want you to do to start this project is choose a topic that you're interested in. Any topic covered by our world in data is fine with me. They have all sorts of different topics. Most of them relate to the UN's sustainable development goals, things like education, human rights, uh, economic development, technological change. These are all good topics for you to click around, read about, and choose for your own project. So let's say I know that I'm interested in food and agriculture. I can click on the food and agriculture section of our world in data, and I can look at charts or data visualizations about any one of these topics. I'm going to click on environmental impacts of food production because I happen to be interested in that. It says here that this particular section of the website was last revised in 2021, which is pretty good. It's pretty recent. So if I'm interested in this chart right here, greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram of food product, then what I would do is, first of all, I would make sure to save this chart, save the link, take a screenshot, all of that good stuff. But I would find a subject matter expert for the interview story who can speak about the topic that this chart shows. Somebody who knows about greenhouse gas emissions or somebody who knows about food production, somebody who knows about raising cattle. Any of those types of people would be good subject matter experts to interview and to use for this assignment particularly. So that's the idea. You're going to find a chart that you like, then find the person who you can interview that would pair well with that particular chart. That's the idea for the assignment as a whole. But before you get to that, you need to work on this assignment, which is for the 28th of January. And it's called Show in Class Correctly Shared and Downloaded Data. Basically, when we come back on the 28th, I'm going to expect you to have downloaded some data from our world in data, put it into a Google Sheets spreadsheet, and correctly share the link. So you're going to need to show me in class that you have a share link that I can access to your downloaded data. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So the first thing you would want to do for this assignment is open up Google Sheets. You can use your FIU email account or you can use your own personal Gmail to access Google Drive and to access Google Sheets. 
Once you've made it to Google Sheets, you would need to create a new spreadsheet by clicking on blank. So I've got a blank spreadsheet. It's untitled. There's nothing here. I'm going to add a title because this helps me remember which spreadsheet is which. I've had so many students say, uh, I lost my spreadsheet. I know it's in my Google Sheets somewhere, but I have no idea where it is. Giving it a name that's easy for you to remember will help you stay organized and will help you find it later. So I'm going to name this after the assignment, Our World in Data. And then I'm going to put something about the topic that the data is actually going to contain. So I'm going to keep this greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram of food product chart as my inspiration over here. And I'm going to go ahead and say food production, greenhouse gas emissions should be part of my title here. So now that's going to make it a little bit easier for me to find this spreadsheet. The second thing I need to do in order to organize my work for the future is actually go down here to the bottom left where there's a plus sign. If I hover over this plus sign, it says add sheet. I'm going to click on add sheet and create a brand new tab within my spreadsheet just for saving the source of my data. I'm going to type here data source. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And all I'm going to put in this tab is the link to the data. There's two ways you can do this. One is to copy the link directly from the URL bar of your browser. Copy and then paste. That's one easy way. Another way to save the actual source of your data is to click on the little share button that's available on any of the Our World in Data charts at the bottom right. This little symbol here stands for share. And then I can click on copy link in the menu that comes up. That link is also a valid way to save the particular chart that you're interested in. As you can see, it's a little bit longer than the other link. Either one of these is fine. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep both of these and I'm going to specify that the second link is for the chart specifically. Once you've done that and you've saved those in this second tab, it's good practice to rename the tab to something that tells you what it is. So I'm going to give it the name data source and I'm even going to change the color so that it stands out within my Google Sheets project. This is always a requirement that I'm going to ask you to have in your spreadsheets. Always, always, always include the data source in its own tab. Okay, after you have that link, you can go back to the sheet number one, and this is where we're going to include the actual downloaded data. To download the data of any chart on Our World in Data, you're going to go to that chart and click on the download button, which is right next to the share button for that chart. When you open that tab up, that download tab, you have the option to download an image, a vector graphic, or the full data set used for the chart in CSV format. CSV stands for comma separated value. And this is a very common data format we're going to be seeing a lot in class. You can use this format with Excel, with Google Sheets, or with any other spreadsheet software that you might be working with. So I'm going to click on full data. And then since I'm using Firefox, I see a window like this. Firefox is opening up this window saying, what would you like to do with this file? You could open it with numbers. You can save it. I always want to save the file to my computer and then click OK. If you're doing this with Chrome, it's going to look a little bit different. So I'm going to open up Google Chrome and show you. Here's Google Chrome. I always recommend that you use Google Chrome or Firefox for this class. Safari sometimes acts a little bit weird and doesn't want to cooperate. So here's that same chart. I have the link so I can go to the same page in a different browser. If I download this in Chrome now, you'll see instead of opening up a window that says, would you like to save, it just automatically saves and I can see it at the bottom of my screen here. What most people do when they see this is they click on it. But I don't want you to click on things that we download with Google Chrome for the most part in this class. Don't click on it. 
Instead, click on the little arrow next to the file name, and that's going to give you the option to show in Finder or show in File Explorer. That opens up my downloads folder on my computer and I can see foodfootprints.csv has successfully been saved there. I don't need to open it in order to successfully save it. I can just keep it in my downloads folder without even looking at it. So remember, don't click on it. Click on the arrow next to it and then show in Finder to make sure that you downloaded it. All right. So whether you download it in Chrome or in Firefox, it'll go to your downloads folder most likely. And then you'll return to Google Sheets to the same spreadsheet that you already set up before. And you're gonna click on File and then Import. Once again, that's File and then Import. Then you'll click on Upload in this Import File menu and select a file from your device. I've got my food-footprints.csv file right here, ready to go in my recent documents. Yours might be in your downloads folder. Either way, you can find the file that you downloaded and then click open. I can see Google Sheets uploaded it successfully. And now there are a few different default options that Google Sheets gives me the option to change. The first one is import location, and this is actually one that we do want to change. We don't want to leave it on create new spreadsheet. I'm going to click on this one and change it to replace current sheet. That's in order to make it so that it will import into the sheet that we already set up and not into some other location in our Google Drive that's hard to find with some other name. We want it to be in this file that's set up correctly. So change this to replace current sheet. Separator type can stay as the default. Detect automatically is fine. And this checkbox that says convert text to numbers can stay checked. That's totally fine. Once it looks like this, you're ready to click on import data. And then you'll see the data show up on your screen. We've got the different types of foods over here. Some of them have codes associated with them. It looks like these don't years when this data was collected, and emissions per kilogram. So this data is pretty much ready to go. In order for you to successfully show this data in class and receive the points, however, you have one more step to complete. And that's to click on this share button at the top right of your Google Sheets window. If I hover over that button right now, it says private to only me. So if I was gonna try and share this with somebody else and I copied the URL from the top of my browser and then let's say here that I open up a private window so that I'm not logged in and I paste it to try and share it, the person who tries to go to that file is gonna say you need to sign in. It's gonna say you don't have access to this file. So that's no good if you're trying to share this with other people in class or you're trying to share it with me for an assignment. So what I'm gonna need you to practice doing is sharing this correctly. To do that, you click on the green share button, and then by default, there are a few options that show up. One of them is share with Florida International University. And I'm gonna ask you to click on the share with Florida International University option. This is only gonna show up if you're signed in with your FIU email address, by the way. But in any case, we want to make it so that it's even more broad than just FIU. I'm going to change this option to anyone with the link can view this spreadsheet. And I know that it worked because I got the permission updated message that popped up. And one more thing that I'm going to ask you to do is change this permission from simply viewing to also being able to edit. So I'm changing it from viewer to editor. And I see that it worked because it says permission updated. This is all practice for something that we're going to be doing repeatedly in class. I'm going to be asking you to submit spreadsheets really frequently, and I need to be able to edit them and leave you comments and view them. So this is exactly how you'll be sharing spreadsheets in the future for other assignments. If you were going to submit this for an assignment, you would just copy this link and send it to me. 
But in this case, you can just click done because you're going to be showing it in person on the 28th in class. And the way that I'll verify that is by hovering over the share button in your window and I can see here and it's public on the web. Anyone on the internet with the link can now open this. You can try sending it to your friend um, to see if it worked, but that's basically it. Any data that you download and include here will be fine. I'm not going to be checking the quality or the quantity of your data. I'm just going to be checking that you have your data, your data source, and your share settings correctly set up. All right. You can email me with any questions, and I really look forward to seeing which topics from Our World in Data you end up choosing.